So have you ever seen a disagreement turn into an argument and then just spin out of control? Yes. <laughs> or somebody just took the absolute wrong interpretation of what you said and got really mad about it. Um, and maybe you even lose track of what you're arguing about. Uh, and you end up shouting about everything that you're just kind of irritated about uh, while you're already rolling. Huh, me neither. <laughs> so in the early 2000s, I was in the Marine Corps and I had just gotten married. And at the time, uh, the Corps had a much higher divorce rate than the general population. And things like domestic disputes and divorces were using up a lot of time, people's time and energy and attention. And it decreased both unit and individual readiness. On top of the, the basic fact of disturbances themselves, each one of these would have wide ranging impacts. Um, morale suffers. Uh, people become difficult to work with. Um, and a lot of people throughout the organization have to get involved and uh, whether it's helping with the work that's sliding or disciplinary action. So work is either delayed or pushed on to other people. The solution that came down from on high uh, was that the base chaplains, the, the you know, military priests, were to put on a mandatory two-day seminar uh, for all newlyweds. It was not great. <laughs> There was a lot of eye rolling and chuckling, uh, especially when one of the chaplains during someone else's session was found, we saw him sleeping in the back of the room. But here, uh, I'm going to distill the one and only useful thing that they, that from those two days that they taught us in one brief digestible session. I apologize in advance. I live in Orlando, so everywhere I go is dry in comparison. So there will be awkward breaks for me to drink. But what they ended up ta teaching was called active listening. This is a framework for having a structured conversation. And the point is to make sure that both people are heard and understand every single point before any progress is made. The conversation doesn't progress until each person acknowledges that what they have said has been uh, heard and understood by the other person. So one of the keys to active listening is called the token. The person holding the token is the only person who speaks. When the speaker, the token holder, uh, is done, they surrender the token and hand it off to the other person. The token that can be anything that can be held in the hand, uh, but not all tokens are created equal. <laughs> to be avoided are things that might be weaponized or will break things if they're thrown. Uh, if you can imagine something being labeled Exhibit A in a trial, you should probably look for something else. Personally, I find that pot holders make great tokens. Uh, they're great size and weight and have a satisfying heft if you throw them. Now that we've got our token, let's see how this works. Let's meet Sam and Terry. They can be anyone. Sam and Terry could be Dev and Ops. They could be significant others or neighbors. They could be any two people. Sam has a complaint that they need Terry to hear. Sam sets Terry down, identifies the token, uh, in this case, an inexplicably uh, blue flaming lightsaber thing, and Sam states the problem. Maybe there's something around like the style guide or writing tests. Terry, not wanting to undermine this problem, understanding that Santa has a concern, listens. For the person speaking, it's important to speak to specifics uh, and avoid overgeneralizing things or exaggerating. Uh, so keep, out, you know, keep an eye out for saying things like you always or you never. Um, those are helpful keys to avoid. It's also not helpful to call names, even if you are absolutely positive that they're a slob. So after Sam has stated their point, Terry is handed the token, and it's Terry's turn to speak. But Terry doesn't respond to the complaint. Terry's job at this phase is to repeat back what Terry heard, what Terry thinks that Sam is saying. Terry may also use this time to ask Sam to clarify things that they, of what they were trying, trying to get across. And then Terry returns the token back to Sam. 
Terry probably won't get the summary right the first time. And like I said, it's OK to ask uh, clarifying questions. So Sam will clarify or correct, and then return the token back to Terry. Terry tries to restate their understanding of what Sam said again. This repeats until Sam is satisfied that Terry understands Sam's original complaint. Now, eventually, we get to the point where Sam confirms that Terry understands. Sam now, again, gives the token back to Terry. And Terry finally, finally responds to the original statement, the original complaint. The token trades hands, and now Sam must paraphrase back to Terry what Terry responded with. Terry's now the one to confirm that, uh, so that both are sure that Sam and Terry understand what Terry's position is. And this repeats back and forth until everybody has said their piece and agrees that their views have been heard. Now, you can begin moving to a solution. It's been seven slides, and so far each person has made one statement. Due to the back and forth, the statement, restatement, and confirmation, the pace of the arguments kept very low. It makes it much more difficult for emotions to start boiling over. This is a slow process, and that's a feature of it. By making the role of speaker and listener explicit and grinding down the pace of the discussion uh, until everybody confirms they understand, uh, it becomes Everyone's, in everyone's best interest to listen and consider what they're hearing. This, however, assumes good intent. Now, briefly, some things to avoid are, okay, uh, hyperbole, saying things like you always or you never, um, any other kind of exaggerating. Um, it's important to keep things in proportion. You want to avoid broad and overarching statements. Uh, you know, you're a slob rather than, please put your clothes in the hamper. Um, personal jabs, personal attacks, and also jokes, sarcasm, and snark. They are just not helpful in, anywhere in here. Now, arguments aren't necessarily a bad thing, but if they're harmful or unproductive and nothing gets addressed, uh, much nothing gets addressed, much less resolved. So everybody involved needs to be acting in good faith. But active listening can be very easily derailed by a bad actor. I like to think that this, too, is a feature rather than a flaw. There are plenty of ways somebody can be a bad actor, but there's one, only one way to participate in active listening. You know, sometimes it's a matter of time and place. Somebody's busy. They can't, you know, aren't in a mindset to have a discussion. It's OK to postpone the discussion but you still need to have it. You still, both people need to be ready to ha engage in this process. But if somebody refuses to, um, you know, whether it's a matter of, of not, not making the time or not engaging in good faith, that's a signal that they don't respect your concerns. So what makes this work? Active listening slows down the pace of the argument and it makes heated uh, escalations way less likely. By assuring that you're going to be heard, people can listen, actually take the time and listen, uh, rather than trying to time their quips and counters, uh, something I'm very guilty of, if you've met me. Also, ensuring that every point is understood uh, by both people before moving on, you don't find yourself talking past one another. Now, there are a couple of really fun side effects that has come from my wife and I being aware of active listening. Um, some of us, sometimes one of us will, will come in riled up, hot and heavy, and just jump straight into ranting. This is not a active listening best practice. But one side effect is that after a minute or two, we kind of, it becomes apparent that the problem that they're yelling about doesn't have anything to do with me. At this point, we can stop and ask, are you bitching to me or at me? <laughs> Those are very different things, and, you know, it's okay to ask, <laughs> especially if you're not sure. 
But by the time we've gotten this far, it's usually already you know, pretty clear it's a to me situation. And I can relax, listen, and respond with the appropriately supportive platitudes. Oh, that bitch. No, she didn't. Now, another fun outcome, uh, especially for useful for shorter tirades, is after she said her piece, I can hold up any ridiculous token I want, uh, even one of the less recommended ones, and say, so what I'm hearing is that I'm not the problem. <laughs> Both of these are good for diffusing the stress. Now, as, as fun as quipping is, talking past one another isn't a great way to communicate. Um, what we as humans usually want is to be heard and understood. Increasingly, we might have to have an active listening session with somebody who isn't physically present. Um, this honestly shouldn't change much. Um, I recommend keeping cameras on, and in place of tokens, maybe acknowledge it in chat. Um, I don't know of a system that, only, that allows you to account for only one speaker at a time uh, via mute. Um, that is where one person doesn't have like all the control or allow the other person to unmute themselves. I mean, nothing's really built around that, so I'm not surprised. But in reality, if both people are engaging in good faith, it really shouldn't matter all that much. So going into it, need to ensure that both people are acting in good faith. You need to understand the rules and the flow, and honestly, that can be difficult. You, you can lose track of where you are in the process. It's important to be sincere and to show respect. Avoid exaggeration. Leave the sarcasm and jokes for later. Uh, write them down if necessary, but <laughs> if they're really good. But choose, choose those and choose your tokens wisely. Um, I think I burned through my time, but thank you for your attention. Um, I have recently started putting together a flow chart that uh, I thought might be a useful visual aid. This is, so starting at the top, we have Sam and Terry on the, uh, Sam on the left who has a problem, Terry who is the problem on the right. and walks through the steps and shows where the token is going in both places. I just started this uh, not long ago, so this, I'll make this available to the organizers uh, once I have a chance to clean it up, but here is that central core loop where you go back and forth between acknowledging, restating, or asking questions and going back and forth. That's this core center loop here and then eventually confirmation and then handoff, and then you move on to the next major phase. Um, I may even do this like in graph biz or something like that, but uh, I've been kicking this around in my, in my head for quite a while, uh, so it's time to finally write it down. So with that, thank you. I thought my, I burned through my time. Uh, I have, <laughs> I did this in almost half the normal time it takes me, so. If, no. Work for children. Yes. <laughs> uh, though for a token, you might we want to uh, Amazon, at least before the pandemic, you could, for about $40, get a pocket cattle prod that runs on two 9-volt batteries. <laughs> um, so it is not only a token of who is speaking, but also a reminder of the consequences. Um, that is uh, a remnant of my BOFH sysadmin type days. Uh, any other questions? That is, that is actually a, a really valid point, and especially once my, once my kids hit like around two or three, I realized, oh wait, they are actually you know, people and not just uh, th this thing I need to feed occasionally. Um, that, that they do have thoughts and feelings about things that, that do kind of need to be considered. So um, if you can manage to teach your children this process and to stop and listen. I don't see a reason it couldn't work. I just, I, I know adults have a hard enough time. <laughs> so adjacent to all this discussion that's happening, when I had a, I had a small 
got a small puppy, a little uh, boxer. And he was the cutest thing, but he did not listen to my wife at all. And so we, we did behavior training with him. And like we tried, we tried many lesser methods, but eventually what ended up working was a shot collar. And I tried it on myself and like, yep, one barely does anything, seven, that hurts, that will get. But the whole point is not punishment, but getting their attention. Um, making sure that you, you were listening to what I say. Um, and after a while, barely needed it anymore. But, but it's, you know, I needed the dog to listen to me to stop jumping on my wife. Or we're going for a walk, heal. Um, it was necessary to break the, like, he listened to me, but he had no respect for my wife at all. And that was really problematic at times. Uh, eventually, uh, eventually it got much better and became more her dog than mine. But <laughs> So one day, uh, I'm going to make a wild set of assumptions uh, for brevity. Um, when you see a discussion happening, the first thing you might try is moderating it. Um, this, this is discussed in the, in the context of just you and one other person kind of in a silo. It may help to moderate and to actually physically pass a token between people um, and explain to them, uh, in my head, the scenario is you have two people that will bicker all day over some stupid crap, you know, tabs or spaces is a really favorite one. Um, this is a stupid argument. We do not need to have this Why do you think? Why do you think tabs are better? Why do you think spaces? But make it, take them through the argument and then like agree. Write a style guide afterwards and say, look, this is this is the way things are. <laughs> um, if you need to revisit it, it's fine. But um, do you have anything more to to supplement? So I I would wait for one of these to flare up. Uh, and recognizing that some that one of these is uh, one of these is happening, say, look, okay, pause. <laughs> Everybody, sit down, shut up, and listen to me. I have a thing. <laughs> look, we have these kinds of discussions all the time, and they are not productive. They 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 waste a lot of energy. Um, it's likely a good portion of the people involved don't care all that much, other than like your two antagonists. <laughs> assuming, um, look, this is not productive. Let's, here's a way to make your cases, be heard, and you know, have the team figure out which, which way to go, or like whatever your, whatever your dynamic is for solving in, uh, in tangible, uh, tractable. tractable, thank you, uh, problems, is, you know, have somebody make the case in some neutral, you know, somewhat neutral arbiter say, look, two spaces, four spaces, fine, you can't agree, we're going to do three and piss everyone off. Um, <laughs> but you're not arguing about it anymore. <laughs> um, everyone loves YAML so, so much anyway. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, it, it's, I mean, you can bring it up ahead of time, especially if you're a team lead and notice, look, next time, next time I see one of these stupid arguments coming up, I'm gonna put this tool in place. Um, so you can threaten them and, and give them, show them a little primer ahead of time so they know what to expect. Uh, but I think it might actually work better to do it like in the moment. And now there, there is the, the thing in engineering where egos happen and they think they're the smartest person in the room, therefore they are right, and everything else be damned. Um, again, been guilty of that many times myself, but, but at least having them been heard and still, and decide, giving everybody the chance to go, okay, I've, hopefully at least you've said your piece, we understand your position, but no. Um, can at least give some kind of relief. I mean, it could be a it can be a cast iron skillet too. Yeah, uh, just and, and use Lodge; they're cheap. Looking back at like Star Trek Next Generation, Picard did this all the time, where he'd option he'd solicit options and then make a decision. 
and like sometimes there are technology decisions that really just do not need need or warrant like a month of uh, of discussion to, to A/B test like set out what is the option, why, what are its pros and cons, and then let somebody else make the decision. One of the things, because of the fast pace thing of television shows, Star Trek being an example. Uh, things don't happen on interstellar scales in the blink of an eye. Uh, so a lot of times people rush in and we got to fix this now. And this is an emergency, mm -hmm. but you need to step back and say, well, when do we need to fix it by next month? Oh, okay. Well, let's sit and think about this rather than making a rash decision. I remember one time I was trying to do this with my team lead. And he comes over and he says, I need you to do A, B, C, and D. And I said back to him and says, you want me to do this, 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 and that. And I kind of clarified it. And he just said it back to me again. And I says, well, this is what you need me to do. And he just said it back to me again. So we're kind of stuck in this loop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going, I did something wrong here. Um, I think that the, the, the key is sort of like to have some sort of token. And there was just no token in the situation. So. That's actually a really, really good point, is that sometimes verbal just isn't the best way to communicate with someone. Some people just can't do, they don't make the words real good with their human mouth parts. Um, I'm very guilty of that as well. Uh, sometimes it, it's worth saying, okay, look, I, I'll send you an email, or I'll go write the tickets that I think you want, <laughs> and you can review them and, and correct them as necessary. Um, you know, this is the opposite of weaponized ticketing, which is really good for uh, good, well used in enterprises uh, to great evil. But the but putting something down and giving them the opportunity to clarify or fix it is another way to kind of participate. This I don't know if uh, I mean a token could still be fun for that, but yeah, I'm a bit of a cat in the organization, but I'm a really smart cat, so they don't bother me much. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I try to, I try to stop circular discussions by about the third iteration. Like, okay, John, you've you've made this point already. We're <laughs> you're stuck in repeat. Um, oh, there was something else you guys said that was really good. What's the safe word? Safe word. <laughs> uh, sorry, if you cannot pronounce it correctly, we will recognize. So uh, I do use this in some of my presentations and. Uh, I, the first time I did, it it gets a good laugh almost every time, um, except I did this in Sweden. I, I don't remember if I did it first in Sweden or Amsterdam, but I went, oh, shit, I, uh, this might actually mean something here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might actually be able to pronounce that. So uh, are, there, are there any other questions? Yes. Come. Turn to the topic? No. Oh, okay. How did I get this lovely hair? I woke up like this. All right, with that, go forth and argue better. <laughs> uh, I've got some stickers in the back. You are more than welcome to. And have a, enjoy the rest of your summit. <laughs> if you're worried about having a bad hair day, remember I'm having a no hair day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you.